Vicious Syndicate have 45 new decks for you to try on day one tomorrow, and in this video I'll go over all 11 classes and show you one of those decks, so you guys have a good idea what you should be playing on day one, as well as what you could be facing. So if you're serious about Hearthstone, drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to get time for some Hearthstone coaching, as well as check out my other Hearthstone Metafy courses. Now let's check out the decks. Before we get into the decks, I obviously gotta warn you that it's obviously not a great idea for you guys to be uh, trying to build a lot of these decks on day one. Uh, you don't want to really be crafting much for either of these, because uh, as you guys know, uh, the meta is going to be awfully shaky for the first few days. You have no idea what's really going to be strong, what's really going to be really too strong, and it's going to get nerfed. Uh, so yeah, if you're short on dust, uh, it's probably not a great idea for you to be crafting much. So whatever you open, try to just build something out of those and uh, try to have some fun like that, because uh, as you guys know, nowadays it's pretty consistent for uh, nerfs to be happening around the second week of the new expansion, so uh, still it is going to be kind of a decent amount of time for you to play with the new stuff, but uh, if you actually craft a, uh, something like a flop, that's not going to be worth, and if you craft something that's uh, going to be uh, surely in for a nerf, that's also not going to be too great, so yeah, just a uh, word of caution Here over there. Here is the mother of an article they have over at Vicious Syndicate, and yes, they have four or more different decks for each individual class and uh, it is definitely looking pretty spicy all of them are brand new some of which uh, entirely new archetypes so it's definitely a very good read if you have the time definitely go check them out a very very interesting read indeed Starting off with uh, Death Knight, we can see that they have Starship Rainbow Death Knight as an option, Starship Blood Control Death Knight, 8 Hands Blood Control Death Knight, and lastly we also have Reno Rainbow Death Knight as well as Weakener Rainbow Death Knight. Uh, all definitely look interesting. We are going to be looking at the Starship package here. I will not be leaving codes for each individual deck, you can just hop on over to the site, I'll leave a link at the bottom. Uh, and you guys can just grab the codes from there, so uh, give Vicious Syndicate their well-deserved love for sure. Here's what we have here, we obviously are going to be having the new uh, Starship package with a uh, guiding figure that has Spellburst, Trigger, Random Friendly Minions, Death Rattle. We can also see the new Soulbound Spire that has another Death Rattle, summon a minion with cost equal to the minion's attack, up to 10. So uh, as soon as you have a few uh, Starship pieces you will be summoning 10 drops for 5 mana like that once you launch your Starship. And we also have the Arcanite Defender Crystal, which has Taunt and gains 6 armor for you, so uh, pretty pretty good stuff all around. I think I should zoom in a little so you guys can really uh, see all of these cards a little bit better. Uh, we can also see some new cards, obviously Axadara is gonna be an important card for uh, each Starship deck. Uh, we can also see the new Airlock Breach, uh, which is something like a Vampiric Blood, but it also has Unholy on it, so you can still actually gain a bunch of health while getting yourself some 5-5 five, five Taunts. Uh, we also have the Ceaseless Expansion here at the end, which you should be able to be bringing down quite nicely around turn 9, 10, something along those lines I feel. And we even have room for a Climatic Necrotic Explosion. And uh, also the MVP for the class seems to be Exar Maladar, which is going to be allowing you to play some uh, really big stuff a lot earlier than you're supposed to, as long as you manage to load yourself up with cor corpses. Ziliax is also in here, he is going to be the summon a copy plus perfect module, so you have some sustain. Next up we we have a Demon Hunter, and here we can see Starship Pirate Demon Hunter could be a viable option, because it does have a lot of aggressive uh, potential to it, and the Starship Pack and the Pirate Pack is obviously a no-brainer still. Starship Crewmate Demon Hunter is also up there, I tried something along those lines, definitely didn't feel that amazing, but it could be up there. Grasp Kill Jaden Demon Hunter apparently is also a thing. And uh, this is the deck we're going to be looking over here. Uh, and uh, yeah, with this deck you can actually get yourself kill Jaden nice and quick, since uh, he is indeed a demon. And uh, you could be uh, tethering it out with the help of the weapon, which did got nerfed to a 4 mana, but yeah, Umpire's Grasp uh, could be allowing you to get this guy a lot quicker, and after that you can start drawing tons of cards so you can really bank on the, the kill Jaden effect, and uh, start plopping some plus 2, plus 6, plus... Uh, gajillion if you draw enough uh, into your deck and that way you can definitely zerg the opponent uh, with some random demons that way. Sounds like a pretty cool concept. I'm not sure how uh, really competitive it's gonna be, but it's definitely gonna be a very fun deck to be trying on day one, I can tell you that much. Uh, as for Druid, we have Arcane Starship Druid, Ceaseless Arcane Druid, Space Rock Dungar Druid, and Aulonia Spell Damage Druid, which definitely catches my eye. So uh, let's go ahead and see what that's about. And uh, here we can still see some of the MVPs from the XL Aulonia's Druid with Cover Artist and Mr. Vista and Aulonia's. Uh, still a couple of 
sleep under the stars, and the new cards here would be the Ethereal Oracle, which uh, definitely felt really amazing on the Fury Crafting. Like, this card is so, so much uh, better than anything else we've seen. Uh, like, this is basically free mana Arcane Intellect, and it's also better, and it's also a free mana 2-3 with spell damage. So, uh, those two effects alone cost free mana each, uh, and this is a free mana with the entire package in it, so a very, very busted card. Would not be surprised if this thing goes up to 4 mana soon, but until then, we can abuse it. Uh, the other new, the other new card here is the Arcanite, uh, Revelation, and that's, that's pretty much it. Everything else is, uh, old news. And yeah, these are the two new cards that I actually also used it on the Concierge Druid, which uh, did very well for me on the Brawl. Uh, so yeah, the deck definitely felt pretty strong. This is not the Concierge variant, obviously. It's Aulonius instead. I don't know. I guess time will tell if this thing really is that good. Uh, Aulonius might be a little bit too fat, too chunky for the for this type of deck. And we don't even have Ionar in here, which kind of makes sense. But also, uh, it is definitely going to be missed because that was an amazing way for you to actually draw out a lot of cards with the help of second copy of Cover Artist. Hunter definitely is gonna have some pretty pretty nice uh, interesting things to be doing this expansion with the help of discovers uh and uh the card that makes your uh hero power into a tracking would be pretty nice like that and we can see discover space hunter ceaseless discover hunter gromic hunter and discover reno hunter and i have a feeling discover reno hunter would definitely be uh very very popular in the first few days especially while people are uh, fooling around with spaceships because reno is the only card that can actually remove uh starships uh building and process and he's also obviously going to be amazing on already built starships as well and uh with this deck being able to actually uh discover uh your top decks and whatnot with the help of exer uh, natalie it's going to be pretty pretty uh, consistent at finding the really important cards for you a lot quicker we also have the parallax cannon which has plus two attack if you've discovered this turn and also has spell burst your hero is immune this turn it's a two free weapon not that amazing anything to write home about but uh it might be uh decent enough we can also see in some discover drain eyes the alien encounters is here which can uh basically be a zero mana couple of two fives with taunts for you as a nice defensive tool and we still have the big beast package as well as ceaseless uh, expanse at the end ziliax is uh gonna be plus uh some of the copy with uh perfect module and uh yeah the rest looks pretty standard reno hunter for mage i'm definitely most excited for Sarun elemental mage but we can also see arcwing rainbow mages up there skyla arcwing mage and uh Ryla Arcwing Mage as well, but uh, I did indeed play Sarun, uh, but I did indeed play Sarun Elemental Mage on the Fury Crafting and it felt pretty nice. Uh, this one, it's not exactly what I uh, what I played. From what I hear, Zacho is not a huge fan of the four mana shuffle elemental guy that also shuffles uh, some uh, random bad fire spells for you with discounts. Uh, so it's probably not a bad idea, like on the Fury Crafting, we were forced to play uh, new cards here, we don't, so uh, we have uh, room for the actual good stuff. And you basically have the good Elemental Core pa package, with Elemental uh, Lamplighter being one of your huge win conditions, but, ov but also with this deck, Overflow Surger is absolutely massive. Uh, thanks to the new card Sarun, which gives you fire spell damage on the elementals you top deck after you play this guy. So if you actually top deck Overflow Surger like that, you play this for 4 mana and that's basically uh, plus 7 spell damage for you. And suddenly Flame Geyser deals 9, uh, and also uh, Molten Rune suddenly be deals 20 damage if you have it forced, so that can be absolutely insane. We also have the new Solar Flare, which is basically a 0 mana, uh, deal 2 damage to everything, uh, face and Included. And again, if you have the bunch of spell damage, it can go up to 9 damage that way for 0. Unchained Gladiator is uh, definitely super amazing in here, so you can draw tons. And we also have the Blazing uh, Accretion in here. I think that's how you read it, I don't know. Uh, that is uh, super good in the deck because it basically draws you free cards and also plays a free 1 elemental for you, so you can't really ask for more for a deck like this. Next up we have Pally, and Librem Pally definitely looks pretty amazing. Holy Librem is what we're gonna be looking at, but we can also see Lionessa Librem Paladin uh, is something you could be going for. Draenei Librem Pally is also pretty interesting, and Lionessa Pipsy Pally. Uh, if you really enjoyed that archetype. Uh, I did play the Librum Pally as well on the Fury Crafting, felt pretty nice. Uh, and the big card here is honestly Librum of Faith. 
and you don't even need this thing to be discounted. Like uh, playing this thing around turn three or turn four is just absolutely massive because uh, this is this is basically unclearable for most opponents. Like who can deal with a turn four nine nine with divine shield split up on three bodies? Like nobody, uh, especially if you're the first on board. Uh, you basically uh, play something like a turn uh, three holy cowboy. Uh, turn free holy cowboy into a turn for uh Libram of Faith, and that's just massive. You can also play this straight up on turn 6 and follow up with Amidas. That's gonna be absolutely brutal. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely a super good card, and you don't even uh, care about the discounts. Like, discounts or not, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit more convenient. That's what the Libram package is for. Like, uh, get your things down to discount uh, to zero for a bonus effect. But the bonus effect, yeah, it's amazing, but you're truly not gonna be discounting this anytime soon, so don't even bother trying too much for that. Uh, it's just strong enough on its own. We also have the new Aerial Beacon of Hope, which is super good, and you could get copies of this because uh, you have things like Astro Vigilant. And uh, Lumia, she's also pretty pretty big in the deck, like it's 6 mana 9-9. Nine, nine. Tempoing this thing out nice and early could be great. And um, she's just too good, like uh, she prevents so much damage, she also has 9 lifesteal on her, so a uh, very very huge threat which most opponents will not handle very well. Unless we also have Ceaseless Expanse at the end, and there's also Lady Liadrin in here, so you can get even more, mainly uh, Librams of Faith, but also getting yourself the zero mana Librum of uh, Divinity would also not be that bad. With priests, uh, apparently some control priests are gonna be up there. From what I hear, uh, Zacho has been super consistent at actually healing back to 42 with the help of that new card, Mystified Tocha. Um, but the deck still has a pretty crappy uh, late game, so it's not super amazing. It's gonna be losing nicely to combo decks and such, most probably. We can also see things like Ascara Control Priest, Velandrainai Priest, and Anchorite Overheal Priest. And out of these, the one I wouldn't hate uh, as much to see would be, I guess, uh, the Valandrain I list, because uh, ain't nothing wrong with a Stripe deck. This one basically abuses all of the good Drain Eye cards, and Priest does have some decent stuff to be doing with uh, wide board centric decks like that. We saw that with the Rimi Priest, that they can actually handle those some, themselves uh, quite nicely with uh, minion heavy wide decks like that. And uh, we also are running the new uh, Drain Eye Ascara, which uh, gives you a copy of a. Uh, which uh, summons a copy of the next Draina you play after her, which uh, could be pretty nice. Like if you summon something like a uh, Wayfinder, like a uh, Velen himself, that kind of deal could be pretty massive. We also have Sasquatch in here, Amon Tool, obviously, uh, and plenty of the Draina cards. Basically, it's after all a tribe deck like that. It's kind of interesting that Ziliax is not in here. Apparently, the deck is not going to be going as wide as I think, but uh, yeah, all around looks interesting. Next up we have Rogue, and I'm really afraid of what Rogue is going to be doing uh, in this expansion. I'm pretty sure that Quasar Rogue is going to be a problem, and also Sonya is probably uh, finally have to be addressed in this expansion, because I have a feeling uh, sh combo uh, deck, combo Rogue's got uh, a little bit too much support in this one, and Sonya is going to tip the scale, uh, finally a little bit too much. Uh, we can see Aggro Combo Rogue, Sonya Combo Rogue, Ceaseless Gaslight Rogue, and Asteroid Quasar Rogue, apparently. Uh, but the deck I'm least worried about, I'd say, which I still believe is going to be pretty fun, would be the Scavenger Starship Rogue, because uh, it can have some pretty uh, janky, uh, fun uh, starships built this way, because you're basically going to be stealing, not stealing, but uh, getting random starship pieces from other classes, and that's going to be some very weird amalgamation of a starship at the end, which could be pretty fun. Fun. We also have Exodar in here, again the Ceaseless Expanse. Uh, we also have the legendary starship piece, uh, which summons a copy of the starship, which can be absolutely brutal. And we're obviously running all of the starship pieces uh, that you can be running with, with Rogue anyway. Some Draenei action, some Velrock action, all around should be pretty fun. Next up we can see Shaman, and here it's gonna be mostly about uh, the boulder uh, synergies. We can see Murmur Elemental Shaman, Grinding Asteroid Shaman, Bursting Asteroid Shaman, and also Triangulate Nebula Shaman. And uh, the deck we're gonna be seeing here is gonna be the Murmur Elemental Shaman. Uh, this deck is gonna be abusing the new uh, Elemental Murmur which uh, makes all of your battle cry minions cost one, but they immediately die after being played, which is a very interesting uh, thing to be doing. But uh, you do have plenty of very strong uh, battle cries in here, including things like Lamplighter, including things like Shutterblock. We also have Kalimos, which can go face thanks to Shutterblock, despite what he says. 
And we also have Scar, so all of these casting for only one mana, that can be absolutely brutal like that. And uh, you can do some uh, very broken things. You also have Magathan here because you don't have any spells, I think. Not a single one. Uh, so uh, after you've actually played Murmur, if you have uh, Magathan, that would be absolutely massive. It feels like it's going to be a little bit too linear of a deck to be super consistent. Oh, we do have a spell, Trusty Companion. Uh, but the Lamplighter combo is also pretty strong still. And honestly, Elemental Shaman was a strong deck uh, to begin with. And now we do have some support with uh, Moon Stone Muller, as well as uh, we're also running Turbulus in here. And yeah, with the Murmur at the end, should be... Uh, should be quite the interesting deck to be witnessing. Second to last, we have Warlock, and here Starship Warlock is a thing. Endgame Wheel Warlock can be also a deck. Kara Demon Warlock, as well as Kara Pain Warlock. And uh, here we're gonna be looking at the Starship Wheel Warlock, because it definitely looks like a very interesting Starship uh, uh, game plan to be bringing for the class. And also Starship, new stuff, yay. And uh, yeah, from the name you can uh, already guess we have Wheel in here, but also Kill Jaden is going to be pretty amazing in a deck like Wheel Warlock, because once you destroy your deck you play Kill Jaden and you don't have to worry about uh, burning stuff anymore. Uh, just like we did with uh, things like uh, the Symphony, which I still believe should be uh, something you could be playing in a deck like this. But maybe there's just simply not enough room. We can see there's no real one drop in here, you just have Fracking. The new Crystal Welder is in here, which can be a pretty nice taunty, uh, tanky minion for you. You have a bunch of removal with things like Drain Soul. The Heart of the Legion is a pretty nice Starship piece because it has Lifesteal on it. Yeah, you have plenty of control tools, plenty of Starship action, and at the end, Wheel Warlock with Sergeras, with Fanotem, with Ceaseless Expanse, and the Kill Jaden, so that can be pretty cool. Bad Omen is also in here, since you are going to be building a Starship, should be pretty powerful. And lastly we have Warrior, Muscle Drain Eye Warrior would be a thing, Invader Arena Warrior, Invader Odin Warrior, and also Drain Eye Blackrock Warrior. Here I would be looking at the Muscle Drain Eye Warrior, that is something I uh, kinda tried on the Fury Crafting and it felt pretty strong, um, but this one is uh, gonna be probably more refined. Uh, yeah, this one is running a couple of Through Fell and Flame, which definitely felt uh, needed in a deck like this, because you do want to be able to react to stuff. Couple Muscle is gonna be in here as well, so it can actually buff your hand a bunch. And we obviously are going to be having plenty of the, the new Drain Eyes, which can actually uh, pack a mean punch, and they can also straight up go face, some of them at least, uh, with the help of uh, things like Undying Vindicator. The next Drain Eye you play gives your hero its attack, which can be pretty massive, and also the free mana Expedition Sergeant. The next Drain Eye you play immediately attacks a random enemy, so that can also be brutal. And we do have Exit Arakama in here as well, which is going to be uh, very massive if it, if it actually managed to attack. And as you saw, you can make that happen with Through Fell and Flame or with the Free Drop. And that way you can actually repeat attacks with the minions on the board, which should be huge. All around, that's it for the decks. Definitely uh, another bang up job by Zacho from Vicious Syndicate. Very, very, uh, very work intensive uh, article, not gonna lie. And uh, I wish them the best of luck. Uh, I hope they get all the clicks. Hope, hopefully uh, this video also uh, brings some traffic to them. Uh, you guys know I don't usually use, use Vicious Syndicate as much. We uh, like to go at HS Replay instead in most cases, but uh, Vicious Syndicate definitely does a great, great job with uh, doing meta reports on uh, themselves and also doing, uh, doing stuff before the meta is actually out. Very, very huge uh, piece of work over there, so show them some love. Hope you enjoyed the video, and that's gonna be it for, to, uh, for today. And uh, yeah, do let me know what your favorite deck is gonna be on to try on day one of the new expansion. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget you can find for some Hearthstone coaching, as well as check out my Metafy Hearthstone Masterclasses. Thanks for watching, I'm Chris05, and I'll see you in my next video, or stream.